We spent a lot of time in the Cold War Alpha playing Combined Arms, which is the closest equivalent to Modern Warfare's Ground War mode. There's some fundamentally different things that we need to talk about. In this video, we're going to see which of the larger game modes seems to have the advantage right now, but keep in mind that Cold War is an alpha. The purpose of an alpha is to shake out bugs and make tweaks before the final release in November. At the highest level, when we're looking at Cold War's Combined Arms mode versus Modern Warfare's Ground War mode, there seems to be two competing design philosophies. Cold War's larger maps still lean towards more traditional and finely crafted Call of Duty design. It gives players a sense of consistency and fairness and rewards map memorization through predictable routes. Modern Warfare went in the other direction with sandbox design, where players can wind up parachuting just about any darn place and experiment with combinations of things at the risk of sometimes breaking the game. In that regard, let's start with players' ability to make decisions that impact a match. I'm talking about spawning. In Modern Warfare's Ground War mode, you can choose to spawn at a captured objective or on your squad. Sometimes it doesn't work and you do get spawn killed, but overall it allows for a level of coordination and strategic thinking around objectives. The most common of which is establishing a spawn behind enemy lines and then pinching the enemy team at the middle. In Cold War's Combined Arms Alpha, you couldn't pick a spawn point. At all. This isn't a problem on traditional small three-lane maps, but on larger ones with objectives all over the place, it just gets chaotic. You're constantly spawning in unpredictable places or being kicked to the back of the map entirely. That means longer runs to objectives, fewer engagements, and it hampers your ability to push an objective multiple times in a row. It also slows down the pacing of matches. On Armada, where you sometimes spawn inside of ships, it can be disorienting and take a minute to figure out where you are. Feeding into the slower pacing of the 12v12 player count versus Ground Wars 32 versus 32, Combined Arms maps are too small for a massive player boost, but it could come up just a bit for more consistent action. For now, we're giving this one to Modern Warfare's Ground War and hope the final version of Combined Arms lets you choose a spawn point. Next, let's talk about vehicle and infantry balance. Cold War's made some interesting choices here. With the right create a class build, namely an LMG, vehicle damage attachment, and engineering perk, it's pretty easy to destroy enemy tanks and gunboats. When fighting boats, you can dive all the way underwater where they just can't see you. With tanks, you can cheese them through some of the railings and objects in the game. On the flip side, whenever we got in a tank or a boat, we did a lot of damage. Because in our experience, a lot of Cold War players didn't learn to build anti-vehicle loadouts yet. In Modern Warfare, rockets are pretty common in Ground War. So to help the average player out, Combined Arms has heavy machine guns scattered around the map. They're in a fixed location though, so if you're a savvy tank driver, they're pretty easy to deal with. The other thing players have is the Sigma 2 rocket launcher. It's high rate of fire, but low damage, and also only has two rockets, so it's mostly just good for knocking out UAVs. Because of all this, we're guessing one group of players is going to come out of this alpha saying, vehicles are too powerful, and the other side is going to say they're too weak. To be honest, this one feels like a tie with Ground War. They're powerful if you stay on the move, and also easily destroyed if you know what you're doing. What's more important, in our opinion, is something else. It's for both games to award as much experience and general unlocks for using vehicles as using guns. Or else Call of Duty players tend to avoid vehicles altogether to grind gun attachments. Full disclosure, there was no unlock tree in the Cold War Alpha. When it comes to playing objectives and combined arms, we need to talk about score streaks. We initially thought that score streaks were very different from Modern Warfare's kill streaks, but in practice, in this alpha, they were oddly similar. YouTubers are reporting that to get the high end score streaks, you still need to make a chain of kills to earn the right multipliers, and that going and capturing objectives doesn't get you there. In fact, it's counterproductive. As it stands, Cold War's combined arms mode does not reward support playstyles enough, and we'd like to see score streak multipliers for capturing objectives increased. We did find playing objectives consistently got you the low-end score streaks. For folks who are worried about that making high-end score streaks even easier for top-end players, we could tie those to the percentage of objectives captured, which is unique to combine arms and a big improvement over Modern Warfare's system. We definitely need to play and test these systems more for ourselves to make any kind of final conclusion, and how you feel will really depend on if you like to play support or just chase those kills. Next, let's talk about map creativity and the idea of the sandbox. I'll just be upfront that it's tough to compare Ground War with Combined Arms here due to different design philosophies. There are pros and cons on both sides. I have to start by saying the way Modern Warfare familiarizes players with locations using the overworld map is absolutely genius, and something we can't recall seeing in a multiplayer shooter before. The overworld map is made up of all the smaller maps, and you'll see the same locations over and over again across multiple modes. In Warzone, for example, you'll land on a Ground War map and know exactly where everything is. Now the flip side of that is that familiarity comes at a cost. There aren't any straight up bonkers ground war maps like Cold War's Armada. Armada is entirely sea based and has so much potential. 
for starters, you can spend the entire match in the water. You can swim under everything. There's no equivalent in ground war to seeing helicopters and boats explode and sink into the depths with sharks circling nearby. That being said, Armada still doesn't feel as free as Ground War Sandbox. It has a fixed flow between objectives with zip lines and fast ropes. You're never going to parachute to or find unexpected routes after a few rounds, like you do in Ground War. For example, there's this one really cool shipping container you can snipe from, but its meticulously balanced sight lines means you're never going to be able to hold up there. Between the two, Cold War might actually have a little bit more room here to experiment with wild settings. Okay, so speaking of maps, let's touch on polish. I can't stress enough that Combined Arms was an alpha and we didn't expect it to be the finished build of the game. That being said, the Combined Arms alpha had a few things to learn from mistakes that even Ground War still makes. This will be a bit of a grab bag of things. Let's start with how players are indicated, mainly health bars in Cold War. Players have these giant health bars over their heads that can both obstruct the view of what's behind them and give away their position a bit too easily. Plus it kind of pulls you out of the immersion. May just be an alpha thing, kind of hoping they're not in the final build though. Oddly enough, Ground War has had similar problems with player icons being too bright. It's common to see a friendly player's icon across the map line up with an enemy soldier running right at you and mistake them for friendly. Neither game has mastered player icons yet. Next, both Combined Arms and Ground War are bad at communicating what players can and can't shoot through. On the Armada map, for example, we couldn't shoot players through a staircase that we could clearly see through. In Ground War, you can shoot through metal on one map, but not on another. Neither game has a clear visual indicator of what objects stop bullets. When it comes to physics, on the Armada map, the underwater game is a bit rough, with throwables accelerating oddly, score streaks detonating at the bottom of the ocean like the water doesn't exist, and the probably intentional but immersion breaking ability to fire rockets and snipe from underwater. Ground War also has its struggles with physics, with issues like helicopters being taken out of the game on several occasions for game breaking bugs. How are you feeling about Cold War so far and its larger multiplayer mode combined arms? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We are really looking forward to seeing their next large mode called Fireteam that pits 10 teams of four against each other to battle on a map and complete objectives. Stay tuned to GameSpot.com for more Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War coverage. And thanks for watching.